Fills up our plates Papa saying grace Louisiana living sweet as sugar Welcome to the Story Table, brought to you by Providence Church in Lake Providence, Louisiana, where they want you to know that you are loved. Today, I'm chatting with Mary R. Snyder, host of Take the Stage. Hey, folks, I have got Mary R. Snyder on the podcast today, and I'm super excited. She's one of my favorite people, hands down, on the planet. She knows this, so she knows I'm not blowing smoke. It's never a good thing for Mary and I to be in the same physical space. Right, Mary? Never, because (laughs) there's always something going to happen. Like, we're going to get caught in one of them them roundabout circles. (laughs) Absolutely. Or we will park in... Four parking places, and the people around us would like us to choose one, right? It's, but it's a gift. It's yeah, only, it's a gift only we, we could have. do. But we're safe today because we're not in the same physical location. So the whole world can take a breath and be at peace. Um, Mary R. Snyder is probably not at peace because she doesn't even know what I've invited her on to talk about today. You just like that, up. Mary? I Are just you? showed up. That's fun for you, though, right? You're like, I'm well, here chilling. It's, it is fun for me, but I'm a wee bit nervous because y'all, I was looking through my notes because Shelly says, do you want to? And before she gets the rest of it out of her mouth, I've already said yes. And so, so. yes, you went to look for your notes. You're like, but we don't have any. There's no notes. <laughs> There's no notes. That would be because I never sent you any. All right. So <laughs> let me set this up for the people. God love them that have wandered by my podcast yet again and love to listen to this country voice. I don't explain that and can't explain that, Mary, but we will mark it under strange and unusual things. That's right. Okay. So what I want my folks to know is that when I met you, or you met me, you almost ran me down. I, I don't know I how. Did. I've been, I stopped Shelly for years, y'all. Okay, that's kind of how it happened. You stopped me, and now I stalk you back, and so it's mutual. It's all good. But you were working, and are still working, you were a yeah. relations manager at Compassion, and of course, I fell in love with Compassion and immediately sponsored children, and we could use all this time to talk about the wonderful work Compassion International yes. is doing, but I have something else on my heart today. Because okay. this is what it is, Mary. So when COVID smoved, as I like to recall to it, uh, refer That's good. To it, when COVID smoved hit and everything just went bonkers, crazier mm-hmm. than normal, I watched something interesting happen from a distance. I uh, was aware that up until COVID hit, you were this very busy little relationship manager at Compassion in charge of um, so many speakers and so many tours, and you had all these balls in the air, and we could really probably stop and impress people and drop names of all the people that you've toured with, but let's not. We'll let's just let's not. wonder. They can Google it. Like my great- <laughs> They'll Google it. They, they can Google it. Or like my papa would say, do the Google. Do the Google. Do the Google. <laughs> and they can find out. But I watched this happen, though, seriously, Mary, that I saw you say, I have this time on my hands. I am grounded um, and not like in the parental way. And (laughs) here I am and I have knowledge. I mean, I have a knowledge base and I have time on my hands and what I'm going to do with it. And I watched you reinvent yourself, not yourself, because you're still where you are. You're in the same field, the same area. But I saw you give birth to something. Oh, that didn't even sound good. I did not watch that. Oh, don't don't go do the Google on that. Don't, don't, don't do the Google there because I really did not watch any live births. But I did watch you just like just reinvent what you knew with a twist and and kind of like launch a new platform. So I'm going to breathe and take a sip of coffee. And I want you to tell the people what you did. Then we'll take it from there because you still don't okay. know what we're going to talk about. I still don't know, y'all. <laughs> I'm still, and I was going to be, I, I'm slightly scared. <laughs> Ever I, so slightly. I'll drink enough coffee for both of us while you do that. Shelly's drinking coffee. Um, so I was grounded. I went from having um, 42 dates coming up. Mm-hmm. I was going to be on the road 42 different days. And y'all, that's just 42 dates. That right. doesn't mean that that's like, I would be out more than 42 days. I would have probably been out about 60 to 70 days on the road. And all of a sudden it was just somebody put the brakes on it called COVID. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was grounded, like Shelly said, figurative, figuratively and literally. I mean, I flew home March 
I think it was fourth. Right. And that was the last time I was on a plane. I haven't been on one since. And I just, I did, I love podcasting. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I love doing this. I did one for about 10 episodes. It was funny at first. It was about the coronavirus and then it wasn't funny anymore. <laughs> Hey, can I, can I tell you that as your friend, I laughed all the way through it. I don't know when you lost the funny because I was still <laughs> laughing, you know, it may, but Rhonda Perry calls me an easy laugh, but I mean, I was laughing all the way through it. You are an easy laugh, but Shelly, here's the deal. You know that, I mean, there are several episodes that did not hit the light of day because they just weren't funny. And, and, and things turned dark there for a little while. Cause we, all, I mean, I was, I was the eternal optimist. I was like 14 days to stop the spread. I'm yeah. here. I'm here for you. I'm signing up. May 1st. We're done. We're done. We tapping out. Yeah. Well, May 1st came and went. And I did, couldn't, I couldn't tap out. So I shifted and I said, Lord, what are we going to do? And he said, well, you know all that stuff you've been doing for the last 20 years? Yeah. Throw that in a podcast. So I started a show called Take the Stage. And it's to help speakers like me and you, Shelly, 20 years ago when we did not have the Google. Right. And we just failed our way into speaking is what we did. We just failed our way into We just tripped forward. We just kept tripping, falling from one event to the next until we were like, well, would you look at this? I'm a speaker. I mean, we well, just look at there. Yeah. So yeah. And all the mistakes that I made and, and I know you made mm -hmm. and just all the things that, that I would love to share because I remember, you know, we have the writer story, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, we won't, but we do. That I yeah. continually tell. Uh-huh. We have it, but I mean, I didn't have contracts. You know, I got people call me when I'm on the way five hours to their event to tell me they have no money to pay me. Yeah. So I, just all those things, all those yeah. things. I just want to help. I just wanted to help people. And, and truly have, and honestly. Yeah. A oh, wealth of you. knowledge, a wealth of knowledge is what you had to bring to the subject of speaking. Mm -hmm. And here is where I'm going to do a lovely right turn on you, Mary. Oh, I can't wait. I know. I know you're excited about that because um, my audience, by and large, um, and I haven't polled each of them individually, but this is by and large, they are not speaker wannabes. Okay. That's why, right. not why they have tripped across me. So I want to direct them to Mary R. Snyder. And please, people, do not drop the R. Do not, because if you do, you're going to be with some chick that sells real estate on the Eastern Shore. <laughs> and unless you're looking for a big fancy home, because y'all, it's expensive up there. I've looked. Right. So don't go with Mary Snyder. Don't drop the R. It's Mary R. R. Snyder. S -Y -E -R. Snyder with a Y. C-E-R. So I want you to find, if you are in the audience, the listening audience today are my readers and you're a wannabe speaker, I absolutely want you to hear the information Mary has because it's solid and it's good. Oh, and she's going to teach you how to take the stage. But because my audience by and large isn't, you know, that's not the demographic. Yeah. What I want you to just um, talk to us about would be, what have you learned in I love the look. Y'all, okay, I've got to stop and tell the people the behind the scenes story. So Mary and I are Zooming while I'm doing this podcast. So we're not saving the uh, the video, but we're saving the audio. And while I set this uh, question up, Mary has a look on her face. I don't know. That is akin to mortal danger. Like, where <laughs> are you going, Shelly? Right? <laughs> You're wondering. Your face is funny. All right. It's not serious. It's not bad, Mary. You can handle these questions because I know you so well. I have that confidence in you. Oh, so I'm what so I want to know is there is there are people out here that have wanted to reinvent something, shift, mm. take what it is that they have and shift and present it in another way. Take the dream that they've had and maybe they can't get everything off their plate. They have another job that they've got to clock in, but they have this dream that they also want to start this. Mm. How could you speak to them? I know you could. What could you tell yeah. them about uh, having the guts to say, yeah, yeah, I am. I think I am. I'm going to do something different. I think so. I think, listen, you're speaking my love language. So y'all listen to me. Y'all slain in everybody, everybody right now. All Maybe. of you who, all of y'all who are multitasking, leaning in all you exercise people. I don't understand you, but come on. Y'all just keep doing a jumping jack or whatever you're doing. Um, 
this is what I have learned is that if you will just pause, because here's the deal, when COVID happened and I was home and you know, all those things I said, oh, now if I'm high enough, I'm going to do this to my house. Y'all, I paid people to paint the interior of my house. I have never done that before. That was not in your lane for the COVID. It was, listen, it was not. And here's what the deal is, is I, I realized I don't care how much time on my hands. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to build anything or grow anything. Yeah. I'm not that person. But what I did is I paused, paused long enough to say, Lord, what, mm-hmm. what, and gave him margin. Because oh. here's what I do know, Shelly, I will make time for whatever is important in my life. We all will. That is good. And, and, and if you will just pause just for a moment and let God show you, mm-hmm. I've got this for you. This I, I'm doing a Bible study on the life of Elijah. Ooh. Oh, and it's so, oh, girl, so good. And you know, Elijah stood before a king, a king who wanted him dead, and his wife Jezebel, Ahab and Jezebel. They were not nice people. They were not, not nice. <laughs> they people. were not good people, as we would say in the South. They were not. As we people. would say in the, and as my husband would say, they probably needed killing. Um, probably. Justifiable. Justifiable, uh-huh. justifiable killing it. No, no law in the land going to get him. But he stood before a king and he is just a man. And he stood before a king under the full authority of God. But what I'm saying is it can be real scary mm-hmm. because, because Shelly, I just launched, I don't think you even know this. I just launched my first paid thing. Oh, I want you to talk about that. I did see that cross my iPhone. Okay. I did. Okay, I'm going to tell you all about that in a minute because it's all well and good to put a podcast out there because you ask nobody to show up and pay for it. Right. It's free. It's a free yeah. gift. And yeah. I've loved it. But I will tell you, it's work. But it's uh-huh. work that I love because God has uniquely equipped me for this. The last, I think about all the, and y'all, I've written books. I'm not good at it. Okay. I'm not good at it. It's I not my favorite. Agree. I disagree. No, well, you can, but you don't. But I read a Bible study that I liked. I wrote that one. I liked it. But I've written books. I've got all these relationships I've built with writers and authors like Shelly. And I chase people like Shelly for years. Y'all shouldn't pay no attention to me for a long time. So y'all know. Just so you know. Just so you know. Just so you know. But I did all of that. And I look back over the last 25 years and I start looking at the thread, how God has been in the midst of it. And I have been on the stage. I have been behind the stage. I have emceed. I have keynoted. I have hired people. That's what I do now. I Mm -hmm. hire people, write contracts to put them on the stage. Mm -hmm. So I realized that he, he was like, look, lady, uh, listen, Mm -hmm. Linda, Mm -hmm. I've got Mm -hmm. something for you. Mm -hmm. He said, pay attention to what you have. I've given you all these unique Mm -hmm. relationships. Now I want you to take all this stuff I've poured Mm -hmm. into you and I want you to give it to people that have a message because people, and it it may not be you, but if you are and you got a message, come on, Uh, but you've got a unique calling, whether it is to stand on a stage, whatever your unique God-given calling is. Good. And see, that's where you're speaking to my audience, Mary, because I know everyone has a story. Because God has got us in this world for a reason, right. for a purpose. And everyone right. has a not just a story that they're walking out, but a story that is meant to serve yes. the church, to serve the body of yes. Christ, and to reach those who don't believe. So yes. we all have that. And theirs might not look like a Take the Stage podcast. Mm. Oh. But you can tell them from your experience um, how maybe a little bit frightening it was to say, yeah, I'm just going to start this totally new thing and see where it takes me. A little bit frightening. I was scared snotless. There you go. That's what I, I was to terrified. Do. I was terrified y'all. First of all, I, I have a lot of really good friends that are speakers like Shelly mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and I sent texts out to everybody. And Shelly, you're one of them. And all you people took 24 hours to respond. Or long, Shelly actually took much longer. I'm just going to tell y'all. <laughs> she was in the midst of some family stuff. I don't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. But life y'all, stuff. Mm-hmm. Life stuff. She has a life. But y'all, I sent all these emails and texts and voxers and all the manner of communications out to people. And it was crickets. Shelly, it was crickets. So I'm sitting on the oh, porch, Mary. me and Jesus. Yeah, me and oh, Jesus. Man. And I told him, I said, well, I'm just going to quit. Yeah, because I did what you said, and you you hear the crickets. I know you can hear them too. 
You can hear him, Lord. He said, we've been at this 12 hours. (laughs) You might want to slow your roll, sister. This happens to me a lot. When the Lord is really good about, um, this is one of my new things I say a lot, Mary, the word of the Lord came to me. Because you know, in the Old Testament, often that's the phrasing, the word of the Lord came to me. Yes. And I've often asked the Lord, like, how did that happen? Like inside voice, outside voice, like what, how did the word of the Lord come to me? Like, I need details on that. And so just between me and Jesus, I've come to understand that on this side of the cross in the new covenant, we hide God's word in our heart. Yes. And I'm like walking down to the dock and the word of the Lord comes to me in Mm -hmm. the form of his word that he will, he will bring it in. So he uses someone like Elijah in in your life and the word of the Lord came to you and said, sister, sister, we've been at this 12 hours. Have you, have you read the Old Testament? Have you read read the prophets? I mean, come on. It took Jesus three and a half years on earth to manage his work. Yeah. You think you could use a little bit more than 12 hours? Yeah. And then, and he tempers <laughs> us with his yes. word because it comes to us. But I interrupted you. Do you know no. where you were? Okay. It, no, absolutely. And uh, 12 hours. So I was, I was quitting. I was quitting. Mm-hmm. And um, the Lord told me to slow my roll. And I said, okay, Jesus, well, I'm going to need a little affirmation. I said, no, I don't need a lot. Yeah. Within within the next twelve hours, I had twenty six people say yes to the podcast. Oh come on! He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. And he's I knew good right at being then, God. He's good at being God. And I knew right then, I because I ask him now, I'm gonna have to really do it. So, because <laughs> so that's that's how it started. And I was terrified. I mean, I was terrified. And then I was terrified to click play that Why? people would or publish. People would actually listen. Oh, yeah. And let me just, um, based on my experience in my life and what the Lord calls me to do, and when I answer him, can I just toss out a few of the questions that you probably heard whispered in your ear and how you answered them, okay? Because this is what our enemy does when the Lord calls us into a different area. And he, uh, this is not kosher with the enemy. Oh, kosher in the enemy. That's hilarious because that's a Jewish term. That's a good anyway. one. <laughs> But this is not something that he is um, going to let happen easily. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to uh, toss out a couple questions that you probably heard in your head. And they were probably something like, well, who are you to do this? And Ooh. why you? Why you? What What do you have that would position you as yeah. an expert to the other speakers? And why you, Mary? Mm-hmm. Did you hear anything like that? Shelly, I still hear it every day. Come on. Every day. Every day uh-huh. I get up and before my feet hit the floor, I say, Jesus, it's got to be about what you mm-hmm. have for me today. Please let me just focus on you. My word for the year is focus. Actually, my word for the year is bacon. Bacon. Because <laughs> you, know, you know why? Why? Everything's better with bacon on it. That is the best word of the year. It is bacon. bacon. It's really focused, but I tell everybody it's bacon. But <laughs> because I do like to focus on bacon. <laughs> And y'all wonder but why I say she's one of my favorite people on the planet. <laughs> but the thing is, is I love a word of the year. I usually have one. I forget it about February 1st. Right. You know, I, I get it in January. Yeah. This year, I didn't even get one because I told Jesus we didn't need a word. If I can't remember, we ain't getting a word. <laughs> my word is focus. He gave it to me in February. Because Which ironically I, is really interesting when you can't <laughs> hold on to a word. I'm just saying. Ironically, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how he does with me. Um, But it was to focus on that very thing because in my flesh, I am not qualified. And I say this to my speakers continually: you are not walking in confidence. You walk in your calling. So whatever you're called to do, if you're called to paint, or you're called to teach a Sunday school class, or teach a women's Bible study, or to cook a meal, take it next door, what. Ever you're called for, you are walking in your calling, not in the confidence of your flesh. Now, so you're laying it down now, Mary, because that is it. You are laying, yeah. she's bringing it. At our, I'm bringing my, it. My, my, my people would say, my younger people would say, she's coming in hot right now. I'm in this hot. Is I'm in word hot. <laughs> because, and you know, my phrase is that, that one's probably already gone because my, my people actually pick at me because my phrases are always a decade after everyone else's. We're about 10 years behind. Yeah, I'm what still it is. saying we have a problem in Houston, you know, and they're like, <laughs> no, okay, that one's, that one's gone. But you really are bringing it, Mary, because when we realize that the best thing ever 
is to realize that we're not walking in our confidence and we're walking in his calling and to yes. live surrendered to him. Because my experience is that is where I find the freedom to do what God has me to do. Because when I'm trying to, um, to be that, that thing I want to be, when I'm trying to do it, I'm trying to do it perfectly. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is present myself yes. as this or that that that's the words I want to use yeah. when I'm trying to present myself as this or that I'm going to fall on my face every time but when I come to the world with my message and I come in a manner of this is just me how you you tripped across this podcast and it's not your uh, mama's podcast or you know your professional's podcast it's Shelly but I have something to say to you, but it's, it's that, um, it's a humbling thing to realize that you can't do it in your own strength. And, and why it's so freeing is because once you do that, yeah. all the pressure's on Jesus then. Like it's none me. When I'm about to speak, I'm just like, Jesus is all you, none me. I hope you got something, you know, because <laughs> I need you. I can't do Absolutely. it. Yeah, uh, Shelly, I recorded three episodes, the same episode three times this last weekend, uh -huh. and I kept uh -huh. deleting it because I, I kept going, Lord, that's not right, and then I uh -huh. would delete it again, and mm -hmm. he was just deleted again, and then ended up putting out something, and I was like, really, that's what we're going to put out? Okay, okay, we're going with that to this <laughs> that's week. That's the one you want to go with, huh? Okay, yeah. that's what we're going to go with, but it is so true because it's just leaning into what he is asking you yes. to do. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. It's almost too simple. It's salvation. Oh, it's great. It's too simple. Yes. It's, it's too, too simple. simple. So we try to make it um, more than it is. Yeah. And that's when we fall flat. I have in my uh, speaking, writing career, what, whatever ministry, what, whatever names we attach to it, Mary, I have thrown darts at the saying, never let them see you sweat, mm. because that is a bar that will trip you up. That yep. bar will fall down in front of your yep. feet and trip you up every time yep. Yep. when you try to live by the never let them see you sweat. Oh, no, Mary. I'm like, this me, I'm sweating. I mean, see the sweat sweating. rings right there. See, right there. You see them? I'm sweating because I want them to know that. And wow. here's why. If we present, uh, we, we can't present perfection, but if we try, if we, you know, are trying to present perfection, uh, mm. this is where I am. You know what it says to the world? It says, mm, well, I can't get there from here, so I'm moving on. I'm scrolling because I can't get there yeah. from here. But yeah. when we invite them in to our, um, in, in my instance, lovely chaos, that this is me, but I love Jesus and I'm after him. If you'll come with me, we might trip a few times, but we're headed there. We're going to get there. Then the people that are listening are like, okay. Okay. I, we I love her. That. We can do that. Shelly, I, you know, I'm supposed to be the expert, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So sister, that would be me, y'all goes on Facebook Live. It's my second mm -hmm. time doing, third time doing Facebook Live. Second time I actually scheduled it. Y'all, I was so proud. <laughs> I'm using StreamYard. I'm going big, going bold. First Ooh. four minutes, the screen is black. Nobody uh -oh. can see me or hear me because oh, I have man. neglected to click a button. Oh, man. But this is, but this is live and it's yeah. unedited. It's unedited and my people still love me. I just rewrote the opening and said, y'all go to minute four. That's when yeah. I finally start talking. And they love that. And you know what it did? It encouraged them to, to make mistakes, to reach out there and do what they want to do, what they feel like the Lord is calling yeah. them to do without them like, no, nah, I got to get it perfect first. Yeah. I, I've got to, I've got to have all the wrinkles out. I mean, Mary, I don't have people here to handle all those different little technical things. Mm -hmm. So when I attempt something, yes, it, there's going to be plenty <laughs> tech gremlins involved, but I do hope that what comes through is that they just hear that it is the Lord in me that yeah. is beckoning them to, yeah. to walk with him and to feel their purpose. And I believe that in taking the stage, that's what you're saying. You know, yes. walk with me and let me help yes. you walk into your purpose. Walk into your purpose and walk into the fullness of it. Here's the thing. And, and don't, don't put yourself on a pedestal. 
Mm-hmm. Don't think you have to be perfect because you don't. Because here's a, here's a, here's the truth I'm fixing to tell you: being ready is a lie. You will never oh. be ready. Oh, come on, come you on! You will never be ready. You will come never on. have enough. You will never you will never know enough. You'll never have. I have a friend who's doing something. She goes, "Well, I've got to get this and I've got to get that." I'm like, "Girl, you ain't no, you don't. Why you need an accounting software? You don't even yeah. have any money coming in." <laughs> That was her latest. It was her latest excuse. I need to get my financials. I said, "Well, you don't need no financials. You don't have you, any you financials, need, so you don't, you don't have any financial. <laughs> you don't need anything." I need a VA. I said, "What do you need a virtual assistant for? You don't have any work. Which you give your VA anything to do." Th- but this is what we do. We create all the busy work. Mm-hmm. Ready is a lie. If God says, "I want you to," then just step into it. It may be a toe tip. But yeah. it's a step forward. Yeah. Just, yeah. A, just a step forward. Just a baby step. It doesn't have to be huge. I'm not asking you to dive into the Red Sea and try yeah. to part it because that's not your job. Right. Right. That was somebody else's job. Mm-hmm. Your that's job right. is in front of you. I have a job. Shelly has the job. You have a job and a calling. Mm-hmm. And whatever that is, just toe tip into it. Mary, you and, have so much more to say to so many more people than taking the stage. As I listen to you. Uh, I mean, you can see that my face is smiling like it's going to break, but it's because I know that the people listening are hearing what I heard when I watched you shift. They're hearing the wisdom of that and realizing that you have so much to say. So, um, you know, we're out of time here, although I'm the boss and so we could talk for three hours, but who would listen, right? Who would, who would listen for three hours? But we, we really are. So I want to say to those that are listening to whether or not you are a wannabe speaker and you want to take the stage, I want you still to connect with Mary because some of the wisdom that you heard today, oh, that's just, she, that's a drop in the bucket. The woman's got more. The woman's got more. So again, Mary, tell them all about finding you. Okay. So you can find me. I'm everywhere. Mary R, don't forget the R, Snyder. I'm on Instagram. I do reels. They're real funny, not real really. reels. I mean, I do real reels. reels. I love them. Real reels. I do reels. Um, yeah. that's, some, that's a new thing, y'all. And it's hard. And I bought wigs. So show up for that. <laughs> and then I have a Facebook group. I'm on Facebook. So it's Mary R. Snyder on Facebook. If you do LinkedIn, it's Mary R. Snyder over there. I just got that. Shelly didn't know you could get that. Got that one. Uh-huh. And on Twitter, I'm Mary R. Snyder. So pretty much everywhere you go, I'm not on TikTok yet. Yeah. I have the TikTok yes. app, but I'm not on TikTok. Yeah, I have for, the app. Yeah, but for a number some, of reasons. And there's one, some good clean stuff on there. Though. There is, but one reason, Mary, because no one's listening but us, right? This is just you and I talking as we wrap up here. Um, I'm a, I am obsessed with those shuffle district tutorials. Um, have you seen this? The shuffle no. dance? You have not seen oh, this? Oh, the Don't shuffle dance. Da- yes. Don't yes. Look. Okay. I am, I've always been able to dance. This 57-year-old woman stood in front of the bathroom mirror the other night and tried to learn to shuffle dance and laughed so hard I needed the pins. I mean, that's just the way it is. Please, please record that and you can just do a reel on it. It doesn't have to be on TikTok. (laughs) Do do it for the people, Shelly. Do it for the people. Do it for the people. You know, they give you like one step, one step, all these slow steps. And I got them, Mary. I'm so there. I do the step and the step and the step. And then they do the double time and they lose me. <laughs> they lose me. And it looks then, so easy when they start. It does. And then I got then I got this attitude thing like, look, I can do it. And so I sat there until it was comical. It was Did really you, I was, I'm afraid I'll break a hip or something. Well, that could happen too. <laughs> that that could happen too. Yeah. And my husband comes back there and he's like, just looking at me. You know, the, that look Phil always gives me like, what and, and why, you know, but he, he doesn't ask because there's no answer. But anyway, <laughs> all right, so find Mary at Mary R. Snyder, find yes. her, learn from her. She loves Jesus and she loves helping you. And you're going to come back and tell me thanks. You will. <laughs> thanks, Mary. Thanks, Shelly. It's been fun. All right. Bye now.